programmer of Midnight Madness, and welcome! I'm just going to say that there's a lot of people, there's a lot of films at this year's festival, there's a lot of these, you know, Hollywood hucksters, a lot of these scenesters, there's a lot of people who think that they're at a party right now, somewhere, somewhere in Toronto, somewhere in the GTA, no, they're all wrong. Because this is the fucking party, right? So we've got a crazy potpourri of films all week long for you for Midnight Madness. We had hip hop from Japan with Tokyo Tribe! And we had that dose of action with Big Game! Tomorrow night we're gonna get really creepy with a sexually transmitted haunting with It Follows. The story of canon films with Electric Boogaloo. The conclusion of the Rec series with Rec 4 Apocalypse. And a film that no one knows anything about from Belgium called Cub. Really intense. Then we got our underdog from Canada. Yes, we have a Canadian film in Midnight Madness this year. The Editor. But then, at that point, you're going to need a little of a, a relaxer, something a little different. So we have what they do in the shadows. New Zealand vampires are going to run it all off with the return of the guys who did Your Next with the Editor. No way. It's been a long festival already. The Guest! But this film that you're going to see tonight is unlike any of those other films because this is so uncompromised in its what the fuckness. <laughs> Ooh boy. This is a film that the less said, the better. Now, the way that I saw this film, I knew about it, I heard about it, and we, 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 we watch the films in the summer, figure out if they're good, if they're worthy for you guys, because I'm playing for the audience all the time. And do we have, are there any Midnight Madness virgins in this audience? Show of hands. This is the festival. This is the one you want to come back to. So, we get films sent to us, we get them sent to us on print, on PCP, whatnot, we want them in our private little screening room, and then we get Tusk. <laughs> and it's hand delivered by the director. <laughs> that can be that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Because what if the film's not good? Sometimes those directors want to sit in the screening with us, which is a very uncomfortable situation. But this guy was a pro. He came in, he's like, here you go. Blu-ray, first time anyone's seen it. He's talking to a group of ten people. He's like, I'm just gonna say. I hope you really like this film, and I'm just gonna fuck off. You're not gonna see me until the end of the film. <laughs> Actually, I might even be here. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go back home and just let me know what you think of the film. We saw it. This film is so uncompromised in its weirdness. <laughs> Single mindedness. And it's also, I used to be an audience member before I was a programmer, and I remember 20 years ago being in the audience for the first Canadian screening with the first time it was seen with the proper soundtrack of Clerks. 20 years ago. <laughs> but if you guys think that you're here for the new installment of the Clerks <laughs> trilogy, what are they, the Clerks, they, like, they, no, no, no. Press pause. Because this film is something new, something daring, and let me introduce you to the director of Tusk, Kevin Smith! stupid idea and seeing how far I could go with it took me all the way here tonight, man. So I had another stupid idea a couple weeks ago, dream I had, where basically it was me and a sea of walruses. So 
So I asked the folks at A24 if they could help me do it, and they've been so fucking cool about it. So a lot of you, I believe, have walrus masks. I know this won't be the Oscar selfie, but, but for me, this would be a huge achievement, man. If for no other reason to be like, I had a dream once where there were a bunch of walruses, and then I got a bunch of people to fucking put on the walrus mask, man. I put the bar real low, you gotta understand. I don't aim high, obviously, you saw a cop out. Um, so, uh, let's put him on real quick, and then I'm gonna turn around, and uh, he's gonna get me in it as well, because I'm gonna put this up on my It's not technically a selfie, if somebody else does it, but I'm not really a kid, so here we go. If you need something to think about, project your dreams and hopes on my bald spot right here. started right away, uh, naturally, uh, you guys are ready to go, and I so want to sit down. I've been dreaming about watching this with people and stuff. I cannot fucking wait. But before we do that, I do have to answer the question. A lot of people go, why the fuck would you make this movie and stuff? Um, I go, what is this movie really about? I'll, I'm going to tell you right now, because I believe in, uh, in being completely honest. The only way I know how to do this job anymore is kind of put my uh, dark uh, thoughts and scare, the scary shit, the things that make me nervous, just put them out on front street. For example, I'm wearing a pair of shorts that have a tear in them tonight. <laughs> and the tear is in a really black place right between my legs. And I have real cottage cheese thighs. So there will be certain points in the evening where if I sit down, blubber will come out of my fucking pants and stuff. So I've been thinking about that the whole night, but I was like, fuck it, I can't wait to show them the Walrus movie. So this is what I, this is what I want to share with you. People ask, what is this about, what is it about? This movie, ladies and gentlemen, I swear to you, above all else, many things, you can make it whatever you want, but this is a love story. It's a love story about a five-year-old boy who came to a country far away with his parents and his brother and sister, who his parents said, we're going to Niagara Falls. I said, where's that? They said, Canada. I said, where's Canada? This is a whole different country, just up there. <laughs> and they put us into a car, and we went up to Niagara Falls, and there I was in a strange world where literally you could speak American and they understood it. <laughs> um, and it was full, like the cops wore red and rode horses and stuff like that. And then most impressively, it was a nation of daredevils because it was people who would get in barrels and go over Niagara Falls. So for me, when I went to Canada, I was like, this is where I want to grow up and die. It's just full of adventurous, mysterious, dangerous, edgy people, you know? at age five and stuff. So I've always been in love with the country in a big, bad way. Tusk, uh, I, I got to do it at a certain point in my career where I obviously just don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> but remember kids, that's where the good art comes from. Anyway, um, for me to kind of get to the place where I can make this movie, it, it's the only reason I, I did it, the only reason we're in the midst of doing another one, I just walked off the set, 12 hours ago to come here. The only reason we're gonna do a movie uh, next year, which is Jaws with a Moose called Moose Jaws. Um, <laughs> but the only reason I'm doing all this, A, number one, is because I put up a tweet and said, hey, you think this idea of Tusk sounds cool? Hashtag Walrus, yes. And a lot of you did that, took the time. And because you gave me a pat on the back, I said, fuck it, let me try it. But when I tried it, what I said was like, because the podcast was set in England, what, it, what I wanted to do was, I've always loved Canada. I've always wanted to do Canada. I've been working on this Hit Somebody miniseries for years. So I said, this is my chance to finally do Canada. So Tusk is nothing if not a valentine to the true north, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We'll Q&A afterwards. I know I have a lot to answer for. I just want to point out that, so, um, I always have a playlist before the film to kind of set the music, set the tone in this, uh, this room. And for the first time, I was like, well, what am I going to play for Tusk? Well, let me ask the director. So what you heard tonight was Kevin Smith's playlist before the film. And thank you for showing respect for that. Uh, he asked us to put the Oh Canada theme on that. That's just weird because everyone's going to stand up. Well, let's try it anyways. Thank you so much! And, uh, and I hope they don't hate me for this, but I am going to name check two Midnight Madness alumni who are in the house tonight. 
One is first generation, well actually second generation Midnight Madness because he was at the Uptown for Underworld. Scott Speedman is in the house. <laughs> Scott, just stand up, just stand up. <laughs> Toronto boy, he knew what the Uptown was. <laughs> and then Jennifer's body, Amanda Seyfried. <laughs> third generation Midnight Madness in the audience to enjoy the film. All right, so, of course, this film is eligible for the Girls People's, Mad uh, People's Choice Award, but more importantly, this film is eligible for the Girls People's Choice Midnight Madness Award. You can vote for as many films as you like. There, like. there are two ways to vote. Just simply drop your ticket stuff in the ballot boxes outside the cinema at the end of the show, or enter your ticket number at tiff.net slash vote. We would like to thank A24 and XYZ for providing us with this film! All right! Most of you guys are already going to die in Canada anyways. <laughs> Get ready for time!